Luke chapter 7. Look with me in verse number 36. One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. That's the king of kings and lord of lords. That's Jesus. Going to the house of a Pharisee. Verse 37. And while at meal, and behold, a woman in the city. I want you to note the testimony of that woman, which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meal in the Pharisee's house, brought a what? Box of ointment. Look at verse 38. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Verse 39. And when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, that's the Pharisee who invited Christ to eat at his house. When he saw that woman and what the woman did, watch what the Bible said. He speak within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touch him. Why? For she is a sinner. He knew her past. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say unto our Father, Thank you for the song of the little children. But I don't know about those who are here, but I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I still need your help. Thank you for your correction. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you said in your word, if any man sin, we have an advocate of the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And we can go to you at any time. Thank you, you've made provision for that. Now, God, please help me. Enable, empower, give unction. Bind the works of darkness. And God, help me to preach as if it's my last message. Help our people. Help us this tonight. Exalt yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the creator of the universe, was invited to a meal with a Pharisee. During this meal, an unusual incident took place. <laughs> Which led Christ to give some wise instructions yep. Amen. to the host of the house and to those who sat at meal. I began by saying there is a level of hypocrisy in our lives that cause people not to want to come to church. That cause people not to want to have anything to associate with Christianity. In my standing, in my thinking, and looking at my life, and what I've seen in speaking to preachers and speaking to missionaries, Christianity has now become a place or church where we show who we are. Where we show off. Whether from our clothing, whether from our vehicle, whether for how we sing, or how we play, or how we preach, or how much we give. Listen, please. You would not believe it. But there are some churches tonight, based on how much you give, 
there is a place that you're allowed to sit. There are people you're allowed to roll shoulders with. And I believe Christ was addressing this. I want to be honest with you. I see that sometimes in my life. Not with me as far as the invitation for the meal is concerned. In verse 36, verse 44 through verse 46, that invitation, especially when you look at verse number 36, note with me, the Bible says, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. That invitation, preacher, was unusual. The Pharisee had nothing much to do with Christ. They were not friends. Jesus Christ exposed the Pharisees and the hypocrisy. If you look with me in Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, and I'm aware that we, we I'll just give you what we can. But, but if you look with me in Luke chapter 6, that's an amazing thing. Luke chapter 6. Mm. Look at verse number 6. And it came to pass also on the Sabbath that he entered the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was what? Watch verse 7. And the scribes and the Pharisees did what? Watch him where the what? He would heal on the Sabbath day that what? They might find a what? Accusation against him. But watch what the Bible says. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up, stand forth in the midst. And he rose and, stand, and stood forth. Then said just unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? Verse 10. And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. Look at verse 11. And they were filled with what? And commune one with another what they might what? The Pharisees had nothing to do with Christ. They were his enemies. They had one goal. And that's to destroy him. But keep in mind that unusual invitation. He, that Pharisee, invited Christ to eat at his house. It's amazing how people will plot your downfall. It's amazing how people will give you invitation and their motives are wrong. Let's take that one step further. It's amazing how we try to plot the downfall of our brothers and sisters. Wow. Amen. It's amazing sometimes what comes from my heart against my brother, my sister. Wow. Think about it. It's amazing what you think about your brother, your sister. Yeah. Now you don't form it into words. True. But what's in your mind, what's in your heart about somebody? If people could have read your thoughts, if people could have read my thoughts, most of us would be embarrassed. So, here in scripture, in the text, this Pharisee invited Christ to have a meal. He went. So, the invitation was unusual. But the invitation was unwelcoming. Chapter 7. That's amazing. 
Luke chapter 7. Look at verse 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, the host, the one who invited him, Seest thou that this woman, I entered into thine house, thou givest me what? No water for my feet, but she have washed my feet with tears. We'll come back to that. And wiped them with the hairs of her head. Verse 45, thou givest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. Verse 46, my head with oil, thou didst not anoint. But this woman have anointed my feet with ointment. So I'm looking at this preacher and I'm saying that this invitation was unusual but the host invited Christ to meal at his house but did not give him the common courtesy right. Amen. Yeah, right. that traditionally they did. Right. Good. Right. Yeah. Why in the world would you invite somebody to eat at your home and plotting his downfall. Wow. Upon entering the house, no water was given to wash his feet. And they ought to have given him water yes. to wash his feet. As a guest, no kissing on the head. In, fa in fact, what it generally means is no general salutation. Right. Yeah. Right. You enter somebody's house, now we shake hands. Yeah. Part of my family, their tradition is that they would kiss you on this side, kiss you on this side, kiss you on this side, and hug you. Sure. We are hugging family. And so when you invite somebody to your home, at least you extend to them common courtesy yeah. right. Right. to make them feel welcome. Right. That did not happen. No anointing of the head. The Pharisee did not extend common courtesy to Christ. To his invited visitor. Right. He was very rude. Wow. Amen. To the master. It was not an invitation. Of friendship. But to try. To give them more opportunities. To criticize. And trying to trap. The king of kings. Yeah. And Lord of Lords. Let me stop here and say this. But what he did not know was that this visitor knew everything about him and what he was thinking. And by the way, sister, he knows exactly what you're thinking right now. He does. When we don't even form it into words, he knows. But not quickly the intrusion. The Bible, listen, I'm telling you, the Bible becomes alive. Amen. Chapter 7. Look at verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meal, at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head. And kiss his feet. And anointed them with ointment. Here's the intrusion. That intrusion came from a woman who came to honor Christ. You know, how many times we've misunderstood people in our churches? Good or bad? How many people really come broken hearted? They really come to honor Christ and in our minds we think you didn't come here for that purpose. You say, you're crazy. How about Hannah? Remember in the Old Testament? The priest misjudged her. He thought she was drunk. But she was broken. She was broken. 
I can ask you a question. At least I'm, I'm, again, I've been preaching this series in our church about the matter of growing up. Let's be honest. How many times have we misjudged people? How many times have we put, have we put stumbling blocks in the path of people? When they came in just to honor God. You see, we like to look, and I have no problems with that, appearance. Somebody coming for suit, nice tie, and all that stuff. Oh man, they're honorable. Somebody walking with long hair. Somebody walk into church with a reputation. Would you sit by them? They got a bad reputation in this area. Would you invite them to church? Would you talk to them about the Lord? I, I'm, I'm almost certain there was a story. Here is this woman coming in but her motive was to honor Christ you and I gotta be careful and I remind myself as I grow up in the Lord and I thank God for what is done in my life but again I say there's so much for me to learn not to pass judgment on people Irregardless what they have on, irregardless their status in life, irregardless of where they've been, irregardless of what I've heard about them, even sometimes when I have the facts about them, or I think I have facts, be careful. So there's an intrusion. Here comes a woman. Why would she come in? Why was she allowed to come in? Because the culture of the day, the tradition, that people could have come in and watched the meal. Watch people eat. Now, they couldn't eat, but they could have come in and watched the meal. The dining room was very spacious and not very private. So it was not uncommon for outsiders to come in and observe people eating. But not... As you examine this, not just the culture, not the conduct of that woman in intrusion. She came to honor Christ. She did not come for a food handout. She did not come begging for personal assistance physically. She had a really deep need that she wanted taken care of a spiritual need and by the way that's why we should come to church that's why we should seek god seek you first and i was speaking to a young lady that jordan is 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 mentoring and his wife i said to her seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you why you come to church why why you come in here? Why, why do you want to serve God? What is the purpose? Over the years, people come to church for so many reasons. People want to come in the presence of God for so many reasons. But this woman came with the right motive. She came to honor him, not for a handout. Watch this. The Bible says in verse number 38, we're running. The Bible said, and stood at his feet. Behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kiss his feet, and anointed them with ointment. She washed his feet with tears. Somebody said, She washed his feet. With showers of tears, had broken for her situation. She knew her life, and she must have heard him taught over and over and over again. Maybe from a distance, she is under conviction. 
We've passed the time now when sin bothers us. When sin alive brings conviction. But he's a sinner. She comes broken. She's heard the word. The word has had an impact on her. She's broken. She's burdened about her life. And when you are broken, tears must fall. When you are burdened, tears must fall. Not the description. I like this. Not how, what the Bible says. As far as this woman is concerned, the Bible says, God is good, amen? amen. Hallelujah. 38. And stood at his feet behind him. What's the next word? Weeping. The tradition was to offer a basin with water. Because the folks would wear sandals in the tradition. The feet would get dirty. But not her. She bowed at his feet. And she's crying. Tears are flowing. Listen to me. Tears are flowing so much that she's able to wash his feet. The tears, the water from her eyes fell on his feet. While she's kissing it. When last did it really get broken to cry at his feet? You know what church has become entertainment. We want to feel good. We don't want to be broken. We feel uncomfortable somebody start crying in church. No wonder we're without power. Praise a woman who's broken. She knows her lifestyle. She's heard him preach and taught before. She didn't want to come into the crowd, but she comes in the house of the Pharisee. She didn't go into the temple. But she thought she would get away if she came into the house of a Pharisee and Christ was saying, who's worse? She gets in. And she's so burdened, she's so broken, she begins to cry. Gets at his feet. Showers of brokenness, of tears. But there's something else. I believe showers of um, um, tears of joy. Yes. Tears of joy and repentance. Yes. Tears of joy of salvation. Yes. Tears of joy of release. Yes. She's at his feet. Right. Washing his feet. We for tears while that Pharisee refused to give him a basin of water. Who's a religious leader? Yeah, right, right. She's washing his feet for tears. Not just that. God verse 38 again. <laughs> Stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. Watch this. And begin and did wipe them with the hairs of her head. She dried his feet. Feet had to be dried. Generally speaking, with a towel. This woman dried the feet of the Savior in a usual way. And I want us to focus on that a while. Look with me and keep your fingers. We'll come back to Luke. 
chapter 7. But look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. That's why I kept saying to our church, grow up. And maybe that you, and I keep saying to myself, grow up. Grow up. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse number 15. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 15. Well, let's read on verse number 14 and get the, the essence of it. Verse 14, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Look at verse 15. But if a woman have what? Long hair, it is a what? Now don't miss out on that word. If a woman have long hair, it's for what? A glory to her. For hair is given to her for a covering. Now watch this. When I compare this scripture passage, verse, with Luke, I find that the woman sacrificed her glory wow. Wow. Good. in her Good. worship of the Savior. Good. But I'm telling you, That's that brings conviction to me. She sacrifice her glory yeah. to do him honor. Amen. You know, the appearance of a woman in those Bible days had all to do with the hair. Their status was the hairdo. They would spend a lot of money in the head because today maybe your status is your your house or your vehicle you drive but the status was the head um manners and custom of bible land i remember reading about that when i was in bible school they said they even found snakes in a woman's hair because she wouldn't wet it now Imagine a woman sitting at his feet, the Savior's feet, taking her hair, which is a glory, and drying his feet. Now, now ladies, bear with me a while. You pay particular attention, ladies, to your hair, don't you? Are we okay? If, if, if somebody plays with your hair before you go out, you're in trouble. Or if you're out somewhere and somebody begins to ruffle the hair a little, you get upset. Why? Because it's your appearance. It's your glory. But this woman, at his feet, did not care about the mess of the hair. She dried his feet with her hair. She didn't care about her appearance. She didn't care what people said about her hair do. She was more concerned about doing him honor. In my case, I don't have a problem. You know what I find? I, I, don't get me wrong. We need to look good. Amen. Yeah. Take care of ourselves. Right. Dress nice. Good. Amen. Right. Look good. Amen. But too much emphasis today is placed on the external right. and not the internal. Yeah. Come on. Right. Too much emphasis today in our churches and I have no problem with standards. Right. Do we get that? Right. I am for standards. But we put all the emphasis on standards, on the looking on the outside. Right. While Christ criticized the Pharisees for their inside being like what? Full of dead men bones. Right. White sepulchers. Yeah. The Pharisees typified a hypocrite. Yeah. And here is he. At his home. She's doing him. The master honor. By getting at his feet. 
and been broken before him crying at his feet washing his feet doing what he was supposed to do but not with natural water but with her tears and she's taking her beauty to wipe his feet I tell you if a quarter of our churches get it we have revival and I can stop right here listen to me don't get me wrong I'm for standards I'm for looking good but if we put a quarter of the energy that I put on the physical and the spiritual revival will break forth in our churches not just in our churches but in my own personal life you go by Sam's or by what's the place where you sell the suits where you sell the suits eh? JC Penney's buy Macy's buy clothing and looking nice and all that stuff but we come to church we are out against our brother we come to church and we think negative toward the preacher we come to church and our thought patterns are negative toward each other in the church and yet still we said we've met with God yes till we stand up to preach yes till we testify yes till we sing yes till we give there is a lesson here for me grow up grow up Christ sees the heart Christ sees what nobody else can see and you and I cannot fool him I cannot fool him you can fool him let me quickly move on 15 minutes left I'm telling you she sacrificed everything she had you know I like quotations there's a lesson here we have to learn to give up our personal glory and honor and esteem to honor Christ let me say that again we have to learn to give up our personal glory our personal honor and our own self-esteem to honor him because it's about him and not us now, it's easy for me to preach it but if you pray for anybody please pray for me that God help me to be broken. You go place, you preach, and God work, and all of a sudden, wow! I come here, and you all guys take good care of me, and I go, wow! You go place, and people, wow! Wonderful message, wow! Great singing, wow! Faithful prayer warrior. I'm somebody. I have arrived. I have accomplished. Nobody can talk to me anymore. I have made it. Thirdly, she kissed his feet. This expression showed her love for Christ because he forgave her. Chapter 7, verse 47. Kissing his feet was another way of humbling herself right. in humility. You know, twice that issue of kissing is mentioned in the scriptures. Once with Judas yeah. Right, yeah. and then with this woman. Yeah. Yeah. She anointed his feet. That anointment was very expensive. Right. In fact, Scholars believe it was worth one year's wages for a common person. 
she spent one year's wages in one swoop. No. When that Pharisee stood by the temple and said, This is all I'm doing, what I have given, and this poor widow gave just that. Christ said, She's gone home. More honor justified. The question is, What are you holding back from God? You know. It will cost us to serve him. I want to pray again. It will cost you to serve him. Serving God is not cheap. But serving God is worth it. Here's that woman. I'm closing there. Here's that woman. Gave all that she had in one swoop and her name is still being mentioned today and so I ask you where is your heart where are we at why are we doing what we're doing is it for us to see us where are we at tonight when we come to the house of God, are we broken? Are we willing to suffer for him? Are we willing to suffer for our own personal glory and honor and esteem for him? Are we willing to lay at his feet and to lose You guys look decent. But are you willing to lose all you have for him? Listen to me. It's easy on the spot of the moment to say yes. Until it comes to our door. You know I found out? It's worth it. Because we can never lose with him. Yeah. You know what he did? He gave all that he had. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Here is Christ at meal. Invited by a Pharisee who's trying to trap him. And Christ will use that opportunity to edify those around him. Here is a woman's sacrifice. She gave her all. We we'll continue that. Here is the Pharisee looking down on her. I say, God, help me. I say, God, help us. We need to be genuine in our service. We need to be genuine and open and transparent. I'm still messing up. I'm not perfect. took him just a week to make the moon and stars sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars yes. but sister I don't know about you but I'm not perfect I'm saved by grace yes. he's still working on me thank God for the yes. victories he's given me yes. but you know what I found out the closer I try to get to him the more I realize how vile I am The more he uses me, is the more I realize I'm not worthy of that. It's all because of him. 
I would rather somebody be honest. Than hide in the shadows. He's still working on me. To make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and stars. Sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Because yes, yes. <laughs> right. yes. he's still working on me. Amen. Our Father, thank you so much for your patience, yes. for your long suffering. Yes. Thank you for the blood. Yes. Thank you for the victories you've given us, given in my own life constantly reminding me that I've got to be yielded, submitted to you. The picture of this woman, her brokenness before you, being transparent, irrespective of what people will say or how they'll perceive her, she wanted to give you her very best. Help me. and Help us to react in this way. Thank you for this church, Emil Baptist Church, and Brother Foster, the way you've used him in our lives. And this church, you bless them. We love you, Lord. Keep on drawing us closer to you each day. Thank you, Lord. You know our down sitting, our uprising. You know what's in our hearts. You know, you know our weaknesses. You know our issues. But you love us. You love us. You awesome God. You are enough for us. You are well able. Have your way for now. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.